Also beyond tomorrow, robots will build themselves, just like Transformer toys. October 2005. Scenes of devastation following a massive earthquake in Pakistan. Despite difficult and dangerous conditions, rescuers dig for a week, and amazingly, people are found alive. In Australia, the country rejoiced at the miracle of Stuart Diver. Pulled from a landslip after four days in freezing conditions, rescuers think that more people survive disasters than we realise, but speed of access hampers their successful rescue. And robots may be the answer. The thing about disaster zones is it's dangerous to send people in, much better to send robots. But do you send a big robot in, or a small one? Big robots are good for covering a lot of ground, doing the heavy lifting. But small robots are really good at getting in the cracks and looking for survivors. Well, here at the University of Southern California, they've invented an amazing transforming robot. It's both big and small. Meet Conro. This snake-like tangled mass of wires and boxes is the first of a new generation of robots that will have enormous implications for search and rescue, national security and space exploration. Conroe is short for configurable robots and the big breakthrough is not just that it can change shape and size, its designers have figured out a way to mobilise it. Depending on its surroundings, the robot will be able to slide like a snake or reconfigure itself to walk making it possible to climb stairs or crawl like a caterpillar into small crevices while adding or subtracting parts to alter its size. Infrared sensors coupled with onboard software allow individual modules to find each other and then lock or unlock together to form the different shapes. Conroe was prototype one. Now his big brother is set to go where no robot's been before. Meet Superbot. It's bigger, better and more flexible. Here's how the robot works. There are two sections here, of course, that separate. Now, each section is a robot in itself. They each have their own motor, gearbox, their own computer chips, their own set of sensors for sensing the environment around them and the ability to communicate with every other section of the robot wirelessly, in this case through infrared signals. Now, here's the ingenious part. Imagine 30 of these all going together. Because they talk to each other, each section knows whereabouts in the overall body it is. So if this is part of the arm, it behaves like an arm. If it's the head, it behaves like a head. Then they can all separate, come back into a different configuration. And these guys are smart enough to then know they have to play a different role in that overall body. For instance, the robot could morph into a snake to slither down stones to locate a person or object, or roll into a ball to travel downhill, or turn a leg into a gripper to pick up an object or hold a camera. As you can gather from all the sticky tape and wires, this is very much a prototype, but NASA's already impressed to build a hundred of these little guys and have them perform a real operation in the desert by 2009.